president of Vital Link, and we are uh, located here in Orange County. Um, we are an intermediary, the link between business and education. We create business partnerships, business support for educational programs, and we enable students to explore, discover, and connect their future careers. This is the Orange School District that uh, Josh was talking about, Handy and California Elementary School. Um, they started a, and, the, and this year, or would be last year, would be the inaugural Inspire Drone Invitational. These are fourth, fifth, and sixth graders who are programming their, um, um, their uh, pirate drones using Swift Playground. I guess that's the platform they're using. And uh, they are uh, uh, working that in that area. And what's really interesting is that the younger students are becoming more and more interested in this, in this project. So they're going into their second year, and they've invited other school districts to participate and we hope to see them grow their program. Five years ago, UCI came to uh, uh, the, um, one of the, uh, the lead uh, professors there, UCI in the engineering department, came to Vital Link and said, we want to work on another program together. We had already been working on an engineering program with designing and building energy efficient vehicles. And they said, we want to do something different. So they said, we'd like to do a robot drone combination project. And the um, result of that, over that one year of planning and developing the curriculum, came the program Rescue Robotics. And whenever we do a program with UCI, the objective is to create a challenge that is real, as real world as possible. With our cars, it's how far, how fast, in one hour, and a dollar's worth of energy any type of fuel that you want to use. This one was finding survivors in a disaster area autonomously. And we said, all right, let's see what we can do with that. And we determined that the first thing we needed to do was to bring out the educators and do training. And so we have a three-part series um, programming um, um, professional development for the instructors. And then, uh, and we ran that twice this, this year. We had two middle schools that wanted to participate. We had 10 high schools in Orange County. And Saddleback College participated. And UCI contracted uh, Ron Kessler, who was an instructor, um, a computer science instructor at Santiago Canyon College. And he left there, and now he is a contract a person for UCI, and Ron prepared the curriculum for those three-day uh, workshop uh, to get the instructors up to speed. What we found is, um, especially at the middle school level, the teachers don't have the same level of confidence because they've not been teaching computer science or computer programming, but they have the passion. At the high school level, a little more confidence and uh, uh, lots of passion to taking on a challenge that's much more sophisticated than just having the uh, robots um, you know, move and land in a, in a particular spot, but to actually search and do search and rescue in a, in a natural uh, terrain area. The second part is the practice runs. We do two practice runs before we do the final competition. And they, as a matter of fact, we had one um, in March, and tomorrow we have our next one. Um, they're hosted at Santiago Canyon uh, Community College, and the teams come out, so this is the instructors and the students, and they create the disaster area there on campus, and they get to practice. It's also a training. Uh, Ron is there, the instructor, and he helps them with problems that they might have to get them up to speed, and then um, we do that twice. <coughs> So the students are out there in the field and they're working on their robots, um, getting them all ready for, um, for the uh, final, final competition. The next phase is the design review. And last weekend, we were a part of a program that the Orange County Fair and Event Center puts on called Imaginology. Most people think that's predominantly for elementary age students, but they've given uh, Vital Link a really large space. We have 46,000 square feet of space 
that we bring in STEAM-related exhibits, colleges, uh, come. A lot of the colleges that were represented here today on the panel had their um, departments there. Um, we have industry there, and we also have design reviews that go on. And during the design review, we have industry professionals, and we're always looking for new judges for that project, so please let me know if you're interested in supporting these programs. Um, but they look at, uh, they meet with the students, they hear their process, what they went through to um, to do their programming and, and all aspects of that, and they have to do a formal presentation um, in front of those um, in front of those judges. The final is the Rescue Robotics Competition, which is hosted at UCI. They have the the parkland there in the center of UCI, and we uh, turn that into the disaster area. So the students um, are all there. They all have their their robots out and. We started out in the very first year, we said, what could we use as the marker that would be, in essence, the victim, the survivor? And the first thing that came to mind was using orange Home Depot buckets with QR codes on them. So let's make this an easy, easier one, and it allowed for both the uh, ground robots and the drones. We put the QR codes on the top, QR code on the side, and had those, we had 25 of them scattered about in the defined area that they were to be looking for their um, for the survivors. And they run these uh, drones and rob robots autonomously. The next year, we said, we want to make this a little more difficult. So we took the QR codes off. And now they had to find them by the color, because they were orange. So they had a different type of, of um, um, observational sensors that they needed to use. The next year, he said, all right, we want to do this even more complicated and more real life. So I went on the internet and I found a sale for inflatable mannequins. Six foot inflatable mannequins. And we bought those. We have 30 of them in my office. And I have scared more administrative assistants by putting these mannequins at their desk, so when they came in in the morning and turned the lights on, there were these, you know, these bodies there. One of my staff actually did a face, a screamy face on one. We put that on it, and when uh, a student from UCI came to uh, pick one up because they wanted to try it out, they'd never done it before with the mannequins. Oh, and we also had orange t-shirts on them because we needed to keep that color. So the student took the inflated mannequin with the screamy face in their car, and uh, the next day when they were going to go out and test it out in the, the field, they didn't have their vehicle, so they rode the UCI shuttle bus. And they came on the shuttle bus with their mannequin, whose face was screaming, and all the people on the shuttle took pictures of it and went viral. We got great publicity and a lot of attendance at the actual event, because they all wanted to see what was going on there. There are the bodies. This was last year. Um, we found, and, and, and as everything, you test, you know, modify, test, modify, modify. So we determined that this worked great for the drones, because they had the orange shirts, and they would fly over and find that. But the ground robots were tricked by the legs, because they were gray, and they didn't recognize them. And then they would turn and, and go in different directions. So this year, um, I had the pleasure, uh, right after Halloween, of buying um, 30, um, we're going to call them the suits that they wear in jail, the orange outfits, yeah, the pants and the tops. So we have those outfits on, on our drones this year, so they're full body in orange, but this is what they, what they look like, and as I said, there's 30 of them out there. The kids have a great time. It's as real as we're, we're trying to make these things. And, and the other element that's different about our programs that we do, uh, grade level is irrelevant. It's, is it a ground robot or is it a drone? On our cars, it's the weight of the vehicle. We have three weight classifications. So all of our programs are like that because what we found was, as a matter of fact, Professor McCarthy, when he and I were talking, um, and the first time a middle school came on and said, we want to participate, what do you think? And uh, Mike looked at me and he said, you know, Kathy, 
I think it would do my students a great deal of, of good if the middle schoolers outperformed the university students. And I said, okay, let's try it. And sure enough, they stepped up to the plate and they actually succeeded in that process. And, and they're doing it every year where they are able to raise to their level of um, capability, not putting a cap on innovation and not putting a cap on them. And we've seen a, a real difference in the way the students feel. You know, they have these projects that they do, and if you look at them and say, all right, you know, the egg drop thing where you drop an egg off of a roof, off of a second story roof, they have all middle school kids do that. See, in our world, it would be how many eggs can you drop off of a second story roof and not break them, not just one. It's taking that innovation, and what we've seen in the students that participate in these programs is they are ready to go 100%. So there's a group of them at the at the energy, at, excuse me, at the rescue robotics, and uh, we hope that you can join us in supporting them in their future careers. Thank you very much.